there's a set of steps that you can go through that can help you to be able to accomplish this goal. Now, the first thing you need to do is to find a fraction that's going to represent the amount marked on your number line. So what I always start by doing is I need to figure out where my one hole is on my number line because I know a fraction is a piece of one hole. So when I'm going to start, I'm going to start by counting in between zero and one hole. And I want to figure out what fraction piece each one of these dashes represents. To do that, I marked zero and one so I know where to start counting and where to stop counting. And then I'm going to actually count the number of spaces. I want to count the pieces, not the number of lines. So within this number line, I can see that there is one, two, three, four, five, six pieces total from zero to one. I care that there's six pieces because I know that the denominator, the bottom number of my fraction, is the number of total pieces in one whole. Now I'm going to write my fraction on the lines because the lines represent when you've gone through one of the pieces. So I know when I get to this line I will have gone through something out of six pieces. And when I get to this line I will have gone through something out of six. When I get to this line I will have gone through something out of six. When I get to this line, I will have gone through something out of six. When I get to this line, I will have gone to something out of six. Now the one that I really care about is this line right here because this is the line that's marked. So when I get to here, I will have gone through one, two, three, four out of six pieces. So this fraction right here is worth four six. Now, this is only one fraction. I need to find an equivalent fraction, something that is equal to it but written in a slightly different way. What I would do is I'm going to try to take each one of these pieces and divide it in half. So I have double the number of pieces, but they're now half as big. Notice I have to go through each and every little segment of my number line and cut each one in half so that they're equal sized pieces. Now I have a different number of total pieces. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Each one of my big circles is now worth twelve, so I could have counted by twos. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Again, the reason that I care is because my denominator, my bottom number, tells me what is the total number of pieces within that one hole from zero to one. So I know when I get to this equivalent fraction, I'm going to have something out of 12. Now, I need to count the small pieces because there are 12 total small pieces. I want to know how many of those small pieces end up on this line right here. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 out of 12. So by the time I get to this line, I've either gone through 4 out of 6 big pieces or 8 out of 12 small pieces, and I know that they are equivalent. Let's have you try one. Do you remember the first step? If you said mark the 0 line and the 1 line, you'd be correct. I need to know where to start and stop counting. What am I going to be counting? If you said the spaces, you are correct. We want to know how many pieces there are from 0 to 1. I don't want to know how many lines, I want to know how many pieces. How many spaces or pieces do you see from 0 to 1? If someone said 3, do you know where their mistake was? Well, they could have been making two mistakes. They could have been counting the lines, or they may have been counting the spaces, but they may have accidentally stopped too soon. Remember, you want to go to your mark and then on until you get to 1. You are counting from 0 to 1. You should have ended up with four spaces. Did you get four spaces? Excellent. Now, why do we care about the number four? If you said because that is our denominator, our bottom number, you'd be correct. So when I get to this line right here, I know it's going to be something out of four. Now you could fill in each one of these lines, something out of four, 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 forever and ever. But ultimately, with this equivalent fraction, all I care about is this piece right here, because that's what's marked. Well, how many of the four pieces have we gone through? You should have counted one, two, three of the four spaces. By the time we get to this line right here, 
we will have gone through three out of four spaces. Now that's only one fraction for this spot. How do I find the equivalent fraction? If you said we need to divide each of these pieces up, we'd be correct. Can I just divide a couple of them up and be good enough? Nope, that wouldn't be fair. You see here I'd have small pieces, here I'd have big pieces, and we know that with fraction you need to have equal sized pieces. So every single circle needs to be cut in half. Well now what do I do? If you said that we need to count the number of little spaces, you'd be correct. We're trying to figure out a new denominator. And so we have more pieces, but they're smaller now. How many total pieces do you see now that we have all these small pieces? If you counted, you should have seen that there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And so that means that when I get to this line here, it's going to be something out of 8. Remember, we're counting from 0 to 1. Always pay attention, from 0 to 1. Well, how many of the little pieces have we gone through by the time we get to this mark here? You should have come up with the number 6. How did I get the number 6? You said you counted each one of these little pieces, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then stopped because you came to your line, you'd be correct. So my numerator is six because by the time I get to this line, I've gone through six of the pieces. My denominator is eight though because I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight total pieces in my one whole bar. So we've just found that three-fourths is equivalent to six-eighths. Now, do you notice a pattern going from 3 to 6 and 4 to 8? Or in our last problem, going from 4 to 8 and 6 to 12? Hopefully, you're starting to notice that we're doubling, which would make sense because we have twice as many pieces. So you double the denominator, 6 plus 6 equals 12, and you double your numerator, 4 plus 4 equals 8. Does that work for this problem, too? Of course it does. We started with our denominator, 4 plus 4 equals 8. Then we doubled our numerator, six, or 3 plus 3 equals 6, and we found that pattern. Go ahead and practice finding some equivalent fractions with number lines.